we're gonna do today is something I thought about last night in bed at two o'clock. I was watching Workaholics on my iPad and I was like, hey, I wonder if you could do that. And if it works, it's gonna give kids, maybe not companies, because it's uh, it's more of a small scale thing. Like if you wanna make a piece of vibrant dyed waxed mesh, this may work for you. Uh, it's not gonna be Argyle or something real um, precise like that. I think you could probably do it, but I've never tried it before. I thought about it last night. I thought, huh, that might work. Um, and it might, and it might be a total failure. But I'm gonna document the process because this is how I got, this is how I learned to die, by trial and error and trying wacky things. Um, but I've never tried anything even remotely like this, so it could be a home run. It could be the answer for a lot of kids. And it might be a complete flop. But the moral of the story is to try. You have to try different things. Keep your mind open. Late at night, watching a TV show on your iPad, you might be like, bing, write it down. Or make sure you remember to try it, because we're gonna try it today. And uh, we'll see what happens. Could be awesome, could be a complete waste of your time and my time. I'm gonna show you how to do this. Dyed wax mesh in one step. <clears throat> All you need is a piece of white soft mesh, a box of crayons, and a heat gun. When working with a heat gun, get parental help if you're a minor or if you're just a big child. So get some help. Don't play with this if you are, if you're not mature. I'm 44 years old and I probably shouldn't even be playing with this. You're not playing with the heat gun, are you? When you heat wax, there's a certain temperature. Every wax has, it's a different temperature, but there's a temperature where it will ignite. Um, so if you see it start to smoke, just back off with the heat, lower the heat, pull this away, turn it off, give it a break. You don't want your wax igniting. When you heat mesh too high, it melts the fibers and can make it really stiff. It can kind of warp it, it can burn a hole right through it. So you're not gonna wanna go too high all right, so here I've got my uh, one layer of crayons. Uh, the mesh on top of the first layer of crayons and then um, corresponding colors on top of that. At first I was trying to line them up so that the crayons were right on top of the one underneath, but then I realized that offset makes much more sense because we're trying to maximize coverage here. Let's see what it does. bunch of wax left here so I'm just gonna try something for fun. So if you want to do something a little more precise, like one color, one color at a time, you can you can do this. Just find a container like this. You might need a few. Uh, but you can make a nice clean line. The problem with this is that now only this section is waxed. So you do sort of have to do it all. Mm -hmm. 
So you could let this dry, let it cool down, and then do your next color. This probably isn't the best way to do it because now um, my next color will get this on it. So there's a better way to do it, I'm sure. All right, just, so I just had another idea, something to try. Um, I'm about to take a red on this end, roll it up a few times, similar red on this end, roll it up a few times, and blue, and then another blue with a yellow in between. Mm. All right, that I have no idea what that's going to do. But let's uh let's see what happens. cool for a minute and we'll see what we got. All right, so for the last test today, I'm going to try this. Uh, I got tired of peeling the crayons, so I just cut them into little chunks, left the paper on. My thinking is that it'll melt out of there. I can just pluck the paper off after. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors, and I'm just going to randomly spread these little chunks throughout. All right, so that was a pain, laying those out like that, trying to keep the coloring and the spacing even, so I don't ever expect to do this again. Um, but if you're patient, it might work. But make sure you pay attention to see if it's even worth it when I do this. <laughs> it might just be lame and you never need to try it. So let's go. So here's that last one, kind of abstract art look, all waxed up, dyed up, ready to go. Pretty cool. But, all right, so here's the finished product, dyed wax mesh. It's, uh, it's a little waxy for me. Uh, my mesh, I like a lighter wax, but this feels like a lot of different companies' wax mesh. But, you know, cool dye, definitely a, a decent mesh. I think this would form a nice pocket. So this one, if you used a, a light green, a dark green, a tan, a brown, and a black, you've got, you've got camo mesh. Pretty cool. This one is sort of tie-dyed. I think this is the one I I rolled up. And this one is the one I did second, just kind of mushed it all around. It's also sort of tie-dyed, but not as cool. I'd say this is the winner. And then this one also. These are pretty cool pieces of mesh, and they're waxed, and they're dyed all in one step. 
Uh, moms, sorry I gave your kid another messy project to try, but I think this one's pretty cool. Our team, Team Ladine, we recruited a new player. She's a lefty attackman, super fast, real wiry, kind of slippery. Her name is Libby, and Riley's best buddy, Ruben, moved to Mexico, and they couldn't take Libby, so Libby came to live with us. And I'm not a little dog kind of guy. She weighs seven pounds, but she's awesome. She's completely sweet, and I still don't like little dogs, but I love her. Huh, Libby? Huh, baby? Yeah, you go, baby. She's a sweetheart. So, look for Libby to be sniping some pipes in the future, right? Nah. She's actually super uncoordinated. Sorry. I... I don't know if, if you had this in your car, and it was hot in your car, and the wax started getting soft, and it was leaning up against your mom's fur coat. Moms don't wear fur coats, right? It may bleed. The color may bleed onto that, so be very careful if you do one of these and you string it up. Just um, just don't lean it on anything or anything you care about. You know, and, and this may have turned out really lame, and that's the point I'm trying to make. You know, I, I just gave you a, a fun summer project to give yourself some cool dyed mesh because I tried it. I thought... The, the idea popped in my head, and I'm like, huh, let's try it. If I hadn't tried it, if I hadn't been willing to waste a piece of mesh or four, I wouldn't have known. Um, I'm not going to use this technique just because it's a little labor-intensive for one piece. But half the emails I get are from kids who say, look, how do I dye mesh cool? I just want a piece for me or for my friend's birthday. You know, can you give me any t any tips? Well, here you go. Box of crayons, heat gun. You could even use a hair dryer if you don't have a heat gun. And it's one step wax mesh. Dyed and waxed. One step. That's awesome. I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys to try it. If you take anything away from this, even if you don't go make yourself some fun mesh, just experiment try stuff just don't you know, don't be afraid to fail hey guys thanks for watching my video if you want to see more click the video that's playing in the upper right of this screen uh, click subscribe click like go check me out on instagram red star lax um, and be excellent to each other